Several years ago, uh, the now departed pastor of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church, D. James Kennedy, uh, you know, he was the host, he had his TV ministry, the Coral Ridge Hour, great man of God. He preached an interesting message that I found informative and uplifting, and it, it's one that can make a lot of people search their souls. Uh, the question, was Abraham Lincoln a, quest, uh, a Christian? And it is Lincoln's birthday today, and I think I would I would just like to relay uh, a paraphrase of and, and highlights of that message. Was Abraham Lincoln a, a Christian? Now, in preaching this message, I'm not endeavoring to merely exhume the bones of Lincoln for some kind of belated autopsy. Rather, this is a way of proclaiming anew the gospel message with which he struggled with all of his life. And that some of you ask yourselves a deeper question and, and the more relevant question. Am I a Christian? Are you? Let's look at his life. His mother was a godly woman who sat young Abraham on her knees every day, read him the scriptures, and encouraged him to memorize them. Particularly, she encouraged him to learn the Ten Commandments, and every parent certainly should have their kids memorize the Ten Commandments. They had a profound effect on Lincoln's life. He said whenever he was tempted to do something wrong, he could still hear his mother's tones echoing in, in his memory, saying, I'm the Lord thy God, Abraham. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. Lincoln had became known, believe it or not, as the most honest lawyer east of China. The young prairie lawyer uh, in Illinois, when his opponents forgot an argument or didn't know some points, he would actually remind them of them. Once he was a shopkeeper, he walked for miles to return an overpayment of only a few cents to one of his customers. It's been said there were three mountains that Lincoln climbed in his life where, where his life was changed. First mountain we would call Mount um, uh, Mount Sinai, where he learned the law from from his mother, and those commandments influenced his life in such an incredible way that he gave himself to studying them. When he was only nine, his mother became sick, and before she died, she called him to her side and said, "I'm going away, and now Abraham, I shall not return. And I know you will be a good boy, and you will be kind to your father." I want you to live as I have taught you to love your heavenly father and then her last words and keep his commandments. Yes, Lincoln strove mightily to keep those commandments, but the question was, was he a Christian? Listen to Lincoln's own words. I am not a Christian. God knows I would love to be one. Let's go to stage two, Mount Carmel, where he, like the prophet Elijah, was putty in his maker's hands. His beloved mother died when he was nine and his sister died. The woman he loved, Dan Rutledge, could never be his. And after his father remarried, every Sunday his stepmother took Abraham and his sis sister Sarah to the Pigeon Creek Hardshell Baptist Church. They listened to all the fiery sermons about predestination, justification, foreordination, sanctification, and the new birth. He and Sarah sat in the front row and listened to it all. He never understood it. He was married to a woman who certainly challenges humility, Mary Todd. Lincoln is beloved by people all over the world and is the most beloved president of the United States, but... Mary Todd never saw anything good in him. As far as she was concerned, he had terrible faults. He was flat-footed, she said, with his toes turned or down like an Indian. Furthermore, he slouched when he walked. He was head and shoulders taller than everybody else. Maybe he just wanted to join the crowd, but Mary never saw anything good in the man. Poor Mary, or more specifically, poor Abraham. He humbly endured it to the end. His life was... There was much tragedy in his life, and the greatest occurred when his little son, Willie, the apple of his eye, died. He was crushed. There was no doubt at that point he believed strongly in the providence of God, although he didn't understand and rejected much else in the Bible, especially concerning the doctrines of salvation and redemption, which he could never understand due to the way that those doctrines were presented him. But he believed much in God's providence, and now he was going to climb at last the third mountain, Mount Calvary, with St. John. When his little boy died, Lincoln was absolutely crushed. He was so overwhelmed with grief that he set aside every Thursday to mourn his death. After some point of time, he, uh, when he would see no one on that day, but wept and mourned and lamented the death of his son, Willie. Dr. Francis Vinton, the rector of Trinity Church, came from Washington to New York. He was a friend of the family, and he was allowed to see the president. Not wanting to beat around the bush, he told him it was not right to mourn over his son. He said, your son is alive in paradise with Christ, and you must not continue on like this. Lincoln sat, sat there as though he was in a stupor. Then his mind caught on to the words that Dr. Vintman said, and he exclaimed, Alive? Alive? Surely, sir, you mock me. No, Mr. President, it is a great doctrine of the church. Christ himself said that God is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. 
Lincoln leapt to his feet and threw his arm around his pastor, and he wept and openly sobbed, saying, Alive! My son is alive! From that day, there began a change in Lincoln that his wife Mary even noticed. He began to dramatically change. There's a remarkable letter that comes from an Illinois clergyman who talked to Lincoln after this time. He said this to Abraham Lincoln, and again, we must commend his boldness. Mr. President, do you love Jesus? After a long pause, Mr. Lincoln solemnly replied, When I left Springfield, I, left, I asked people to pray for me. I was not a Christian. When I buried my son, the severest trial of my life, I was not a Christian. But when I went to Gettysburg and I saw those graves of thousands of soldiers, I then and there consecrated myself to Christ. Yes, I do love Jesus. He had found the peace that eluded him his entire life. Therefore, being justified by faith, he now had peace with God. Um, when a lady connected with the work of the Christian mission and later came to see him, he said, I lived until my boy Willie died without realizing fully these things about the gospel. It showed me the weakness I had ne never felt before. If I, can take, if I can take what you have stated as to what a Christian is as a test, I think I can safely say that I know something of the charge of which you speak which is called the new birth, which Lincoln alluded in that very speech, uh, that this country might have a new birth and freedom. And I will further add that it has been my intention for this time at a suitable opportunity to make a public religious profession. Dr. Gurley was the pastor of the New York Avenue Presbyterian Church in Washington, where Lincoln attended regularly, not only on Saturday morning, but on Wednesday nights. One Wednesday night, he sat in an antechamber right off uh, the chancel of the door, what, uh, the door halfway open so he would not disturb the worship of others but that he might partake. Dr. Gurley said that Lincoln had wanted to make a public profession of his faith on Easter Sunday morning. But first there was an incident at Ford's Theater. This was a Wednesday night and that, or excuse me, a Thursday night. That afternoon a, a man from the south crossed the street into a tavern where he had a number of drinks. His name was John Wilkes Booth. That evening, a soldier from the north left his post and was supposed to be guarding Lincoln's box, crossed the same street and entered the same tavern to have a drink while the aforementioned actor quietly opened the guarded door from the president's box and went in. Lincoln was sitting up talking to his wife, not paying attention to the play. He said, Mary, do you know what I would like to do now? Now that the war is over, we can go to the Near East. Booth stepped in behind the president. We could go to Bethlehem where he was born. We could visit Bethany. For those hallowed steps were heard, we could go to Jerusalem and BANG! The maddest pistol shot in history rang forth. Lincoln was carried across the street to a boarding house, which is now a museum, and laid diagonally across the board, which was too short for his huge frame. On the next day, Good Friday, he died. Walt Whitman writes a poem called My Captain, My Captain, where he pictures Lincoln as the captain of the ship of state which has come through a terrible storm and now lies dead upon the deck. My captain does not answer, his lips are pale and still. My father does not feel my arm, he has no pulse or will. The ship is anchored safe and sound, its voyage closed and done. From fearful tip, the victor ship comes in with object one. Exult o shores and ring o bells, but I, with mournful tread, walk the deck my captain lies, fallen, cold, and dead. But there is a fourth mountain that Lincoln climbed. And we cannot leave him lying there upon the deck of the ship of state. For I would like to add one of my own, that fourth mountain, beyond Mount Calvary. The fourth was Mount Zion, where he went up to. Not the Jerusalem of the Near East, where he wanted to visit, but the Jerusalem of on high, to the heavenly Jerusalem. Taken there by Christ, to whom he had consecrated his heart, in whom he now trusted for his salvation. He had abandoned his trust in the commandments and his own strivings, realizing that those commandments were not his salvation, but his damnation, and now he trusted in Christ. Yes, dear friend, at long length, Abraham Lincoln was a Christian. Are you?